Okay, I come back with chapter five, section five point two. We're gonna find in theoretical uh, properties. Um, uh, we're gonna find theoretical probability of equally likely events. And we're gonna find the probability of the complement of an event and use basic probability rules. Okay, let's move. So for the probabilities, uh, you should understand that the probability have to be in between from zero to one. You, if you have something like probability of X uh, equal to negative 0 0.1, oh, that is wrong, okay? That is wrong. Or if you have like P of X equal to 1.1, .1, that also wrong, okay? You have to have the probability in between zero and one only, okay? So in the future, if I see someone uh, give me the answer as uh, negative uh, probability of, uh, equal to negative something that is wrong uh, or, or more than one is wrong right, right way, okay? Uh, it can be expressed as fraction, decimal, or percent, right? For example, uh, you should understand that like um, uh, one half, which is uh, zero or five, or it's gonna be equal to 50%, right? So either, either uh, of these three ways, so uh, you can use, but uh, um, usually uh, if I ask for like probability, you can just use the decimal or uh, uh, um, or fraction, that's fine too. But uh, if I, I say like find a percentage, then you, you use the percent better, all right? Um, and uh, an event has a probability of zero only if it can be never happen. So, uh, for example, I'm pretty sure that, um, I mean, how can I say? Say, um, if, uh, if I say like, um, probability to have uh, 32 days in a month, then it's gonna be zero, right? Um, because there's, there's no way to get 32 days for in a month, all right? Now, uh, an event has probability of one only if it is certain to happen. Uh, so how can I say? Okay, yeah. probability, probability, uh, uh, this is so, I mean, usually in the real life, it's not, <laughs> not easy to, to happen like this, but um, uh, maybe I'm gonna say like, um, probability that, um, that have, uh, <laughs> Um, maybe I'm gonna say like the probability of um, of the uh, tomorrow the sun uh, will will be rise up something like that. So then absolutely it should be true and 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 it will ha have to ha certainly happen. So um uh, so that is gonna be equal to one. Um, now, uh, for the probability notation, events are usually represent with, uh, with uppercase letter. Uh, it's going to be A, B, C, or whatever. And the probability of event A occurring is written as P, parenthesis A. Okay, let's say tossing, uh, example, toss a coin. Uh, let A present the event the coin lands on hands. So you're gonna have like P of A equal to one half or 0 0.5 or 50%, right? So that is an example for, for toss coin. Let's see, let's go to the next one. Now, let's talk about the complement, okay? Um, if you have learned about complement, um, in uh, in previous math, uh, 
you should remember that as complement refer to the event not occurring. Okay, so uh, the complement of event A is written as A C, right? Over here. And uh, what does that mean? Let's let's do an example. Toss a coin, and then A is caught lands on hand. That means what? A C gonna be caught does not land on hands. What does that mean? It should you should land on town, right? Um, but in this, uh, I mean, in general, we're gonna say for the court does not land on hands. And let and let's do another example. Wait for a bus and note is arrive arrival time. So let's a is bus arrival arrives on time. So then the the event a complement event gonna be bus did not arrive on time. So it's always like not, the event not occurring, okay? So let's move to the next one. Now, the property of an event and its complement, say property of A does not occur, um, uh, will be one minus the property of A does occur. So similar with like, if I say, um, if I say like tomorrow, uh, we're gonna have like 30% probability, 30% uh, that gonna be rain. It, it's gonna be rain tomorrow, right? So then, so then uh, uh, for the probability of not rain, will be, um, you're going to use 1 minus 30%, which is 0 0.3. And that's going to be 0 0.7, which is 70%. Right? 70%. Okay. And uh, now, um, for example, last event A represent the event the candidate wins an election. Suppose probability of A gonna be equal to 0 0.7, right? So event A is candidate wins. Then AC, which is complement of A, represent the event that candidate does not win. Okay, and then so then so then we're gonna have like P probability of, of, of candidate does not win over here. I'm gonna be one minus P of A. And that's going to give me one minus zero or seven and equal to zero three. So that is that is a way to uh, to to do to find the complement uh, probability of a complement of an event and complement. Okay, let's move for the sample sway and events for equal equally likely outcome. Um, so sample space, um, the set of all possible equally likely outcomes of an experiment. And what is the event? Okay, one more time. Sample space is a set of all possible equally likely outcome of an experiment. Okay, and event is any collection of outcome in the sample space. Let's see if they have an uh, example. Okay, good. So let's, do, uh, let, let's see an example here for the sample space. Um, um, for the experiment, row of fan dies one time. So what is sample space? It could be one, two, three, four, five, or six. So, um so sample space is like the outcome is it could happen right um you should understand that one what's it one mean one is like a like a phase that have only only one dog something like that and then two is a phase of the dies that have two two dogs here right similarly for the rest if you know how to play the die right 
Okay. What about um, what about row and even number? Okay. Row and even uh, for the event that row and even number. Okay. So sample space in here should be only the even, which is two, four, six. Right. Uh, I mean the outcome in here. Okay. And example for the event row number less than three, then um, then the outcome should be one or two. There's no zero, so less you should understand that less than three should be just one or two. Okay. Now let's move to the next one. Okay, so using a sample space to find theoretical OT. Uh, for equally likely events, um, we're gonna have formula as OT of event A will be equal to number of outcomes in A divided by number of all possible outcomes. Okay. Now let's do an example uh, to, 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 to get the clear. So, if I draw that, let A present the event, get a number less than three. And then I'm gonna find property of event A. What is event A? get a number less than three so how many uh so um so let's let use a formula up here uh, and say number of outcome in a okay so number of outcome in a is uh even then get number less than three which is one and two one and two see that then you're gonna have two outcomes for number outcome in A. For the number of all possible outcome, you're gonna look at the sample space. How many number, how many number of all possible outcome for the sample space you have? You will count one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out, six total outcomes, six, six number of all possible outcomes, right? So then you will have property of A, if an A will be two over six and equal to one over three. And you can just, I mean, you can just stop here. Usually when you present uh, on the test, you, sh you, must, uh, you must have this step and then move to the simplify because I want to make sure you get one third from where okay all right so let's move using a sample space to find a theoretical property so a family has two children find the property that both children are girls all right let a present the event that both are girls so we have sample space for two children. What do you think? It could be what? It could be, the first one could be boy, boy and second one could also be boy. And the first one is boy, second one is girl. And in, a, in another way, so first one is girl, second one is boy, and then first one is girl, second one is girl. Totally, for the uh, this is sample space, so the totally number of outcome going to be four outcomes. All right, but if you are using the formula from uh, from here, right, P of A is number of outcome in A, right. So you need to find the number of outcome in A. Even A, what is that? Google. You want a Google only. How many? How many outcome? Do you have uh, from the sample space for this for this event 
only one over here. So that means you have only one account. And then you will take one number outcome for the event A, one on top divided by number outcome for, um, for the, the sample space for which equal to 0 0.25 and 25%. Okay. Now, um, we're going to talk about combining event with end. Okay. So if you see the word end in between two event you may have to you may have to think about uh, combining events okay so an event belonging to a and b must belong to both a and b what does that mean example if event a represent wearing a hat and event b represent raising hand then someone in a and b is wearing a hat and also raising a hand let's do an exact and as an example i say that uh, if a uh, a is a uh, girl b is the people, uh, the people, um, uh, I say, I was a is uh, uh, girls in in my class, or I said that like, I said that like, woman or female, female student in my class. And then B is going to be, uh, say, 19 years old uh, student. So if I say, <coughs> if I say A is female student in my class, it could, it could be like, uh, I know, it could be like more than 20 uh, students, right? Is it's good? Uh, it's um, the, 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 it should be all female, right? And uh, it doesn't have to worry about the age, it could be 20, it could be 18, it could be whatever. But if it be is 19 years old, student, so it could be um, it could be female, it could be male, uh, and all of them has to be in 19 years old. Um, but you may say A and B is mean what? It mean night, it mean, um, so let's say female, female student, uh, that, that, um, uh, 19, years old that is a 19 okay yeah so you have to understand that it had to be certified both of these event for a and b for the uh for the student uh for for the for the um student that certified a and b i mean is had to certify both event Okay, let's move. Combining event using and. Okay, a person is selected at random from this group. Find the probability that he, she is wearing a hat and raising his her or her hand. Okay, so uh, let's not let's take a look at number in sample space. So how many people in here totally you have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Totally is six people, right? So that is sample space. I mean, uh, that could be like uh, uh, um, total, total outcome, um, uh, total number of outcome, right? 
Um, and now, uh, -oh. uh, let's talk about number raising a hand. Okay, number raising a hand uh, and wearing a hat and wearing a hat. So, raising a hand is here and wearing a hat also here. Raising a hand, wearing a hat. So we have only two. It's Maria and David. All right. So then we we'll see of A and B will be two divided by six. Okay. Now, instead of the word and, we're using the word or. So an event belonging to A or B must belong to A or B or both. Okay, that's a little bit confused in between A and B, right? Um, uh, and now, uh, let's do an example to see. So if A is wearing a hat and event B represent raising a hand, okay? Then someone in A or B is wearing a hat or raising hand or boat will be A or B. Maybe you're still confused? Let's take a look back with this example, right? We we using the word all. A person is selected at random uh, from this group and find the opportunity that he or she is wearing a hat or raising his her hand. Okay, number of samples but it will be equal to six. Right? A total, this will be like total number of six. One, two, three, five, six, six, four. And number of raising hand, okay? Number of raising hand or wearing hat or boat. So, so, so you wanna look for people who are raising hand. Okay, I saw here, here. So I have two already, right? Um, and I, I gonna look at the people who who are wearing hat or uh, wearing hat. I know that Rena also wearing hat. I know Maria wearing hat, but she didn't see wearing a uh, raising hand already. So I, I count her already. So I don't worry about her. Totally, right now I having only three. A boat, right? Even a boat is just two of these Maria and David. They are raising hand and wearing hat. So, so totally I have four. Raising hand or wedding hand or boat is three, three people Rena, Maria, and David. So, so then the probability of A or B is going to be three out of six. Okay? So, remember last, uh, last time when I talked about and. And is had the, the uh, if, if, if we are talk, looking for the uh, raising hand and wearing hat, that means you have to satisfy both that condition raising hand, wearing hat. Maybe I'm gonna raising hand, wearing hat, raising hand, wearing hat. That's okay. If or then you just need raising hand, one, raising hand, good. Wedding hat, good. This one got a wedding hat, but I don't care. Uh, I don't need to be cut because it's cut already. But it's done. Uh, David, wear wedding hat, but I don't cut. Okay, okay. So that's the difference. Now, finding property from two way tables. Okay. It is similar with uh, uh, one of the problem. Uh, if you examine before, uh, it's harder. <laughs> so 
let's uh, read the question. In the 2012 general social surveys, people were asked about their happiness and were also asked whether they agree with following statement. In a marriage, uh, sorry, in a marriage, the husband should work and the wife should take care of the home. Um, the following table summarize the data collected. Okay, so usually when you see a table like this, um, you must to know, uh, you must to um, uh, label the column of total and the row of total. So later on, you don't wanna forget it. Right. Okay, so you understand that the first column here is talking about the agree, people who agree with happy and happy. Second one is talking about don't know, don't know, happy and don't know. Disagree, happy, and unhappy. Okay, so let's move. Now, let's buy the protein from two way table. All right, let me show you how to buy it. Uh, make sure you, you label the total. All right, okay, suppose. A person is randomly selected from this group. Find A, happy and agree. Okay. Um, for the happy and agree, um, uh, let me um, let me say it's a total number. Uh, uh, happy and agree. So let's uh, let's see who is happy is here and also agree is here. So so I have two for two on the top, and I divide by total total outcome. We is one four one one four six. Okay, so if you um you must write this first and then you can use a calculator to simplify it. Um so it could be you can you can you can write as uh, two decimal place zero Point two one, that's five to me too. Okay, and and now you will talk about probability of happy or agree. Okay, uh, let me do this. So, who is happy? I know this one happy. Uh, this one happy. This one. Oh wait, happy and agree. Uh, all agree. This. Uh, okay, this also in happy. Um, okay, and for the agree is 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 here, but I don't need to recall it. So, and another one is agree is here. So you can you can know that 
total for the happy of agree should be uh, you're going to add two for two plus 65 plus 684 plus 45 see that and then you divide by the total outcome which is 1146 okay and now you're going to use the calculator to buy it so it's going to be 1036 divided by 1146 and if you use one more time so you're going to have about 0 0.9 Zero point nine zero. So that's going to be the answer for happy or agree. Now let's talk about the property of agree or don't don't know. So where is, uh, I'm gonna delete this so we can see it's clear. Agree or don't know. So where is agree? Agree is this column. So one, two. Uh, where is don't know? Okay, so this one. Three, four. So you will. So you will have uh, the number of outcome for agree or don't know will be. 242 plus 45 plus 65 plus 30 and then divided by 1146 total of outcome for everything then that should be um, 287 plus 95 which equal to 380 382 divided by 1146 and you use calculator what do you have 382 divided by 1146 0 0.33 0 0.33 something keep going all right so that is way to to do for uh to find the property from two way tables um the next page will be the way uh, of the nose showing you to do column A, happy and agree again. But I actually show you very detailedly uh, for my way already. So you can um, take a look at mine before you see this. Check. Um, yeah. So you can see that. Exactly the same. Okay, so when counting the number of people who agree or don't know, no person was both uh, uh, both category. We say event agree. So you, you, you see here for uh, don't know for agree here and don't know here. They don't have uh, 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 we, they don't have any person that was in both these categories. Uh, so we say the event agree and event don't know are mutually exclu exclusive event. All right. Okay. Um, so in another things, in another way, um, if we talk about happy, and agree say here is happy here is an event of happy here is an event of agree uh, there's in an intersection in the, uh, here right we is two for two and um, and I gotta say like um, uh, there's two for two people who appear in both categories at the same time uh, we mean what we mean they are uh, happy and agree. Um, 
and uh, and and we can say what we can say the event happy and agree and not mutually exclusive, or someone say mutually inclusive. Doesn't doesn't matter, but mostly we gonna score it is not mutually exclusive. Okay. And move. Now. So instead of trying to um, trying to use by counting stuff like this, uh, adding this stuff, right? Um, uh, we actually figure out a formula uh, to to find for um, like a poverty rules for all. And it's called probability of A or B will be equal to P probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. And you need to keep in uh, keep in mind that if A and B are mutually exclusive, if A and B are mutually exclusive, then they cannot happen at the same time. So, probability of A and B equal to zero. Only the case that, that mutually is inclusive. <clears throat> so, uh, um, in that case, if you use, uh, um, if you keep using this formula, then you gonna have a formula, a special formula for the mutually exclusive event, which means probability of A or B will be just equal to probability of A plus probability of B, easily. Okay. So I'm going to say the first formula here is called general formula for adding for any, any adding event or just say all event in between two events with all right so this general formula will always work it just uh it just uh, need to um need to have an extra time to prove prove that uh, if uh, if a and b are mutually exclusive then then you have uh, it equal to zero. Um, for this formula, it should be like a special K. Right? If you know that, if you know that, it is mutually exclusive. Okay? Layer two, an example. Row of fair, six side down, five. Probability of rolling an odd number or a number greater than three. Okay, what does that mean? You want to have odd number. We mean what? One, three, five, seven. No, there's no seven. Right, six is maximum. Or a number greater than three. Okay, so that is the first three outcome um, for the case that odd number or the second one is could be uh, greater than three right it should be four five six so it should be like that right so one three five four five six so so that mean that mean if you combine these two you're gonna have like a uh, set with only one, three, four, five, and six. Don't recap five two times, okay? B, rolling a number less than three or rolling a six. So less than three, one, two, only. And rolling a six, I mean six. So, so I'm gonna say one, two, and six. 
Okay. Let's move. So, hey, ro uh, approaching of rolling a, an odd number or a number greater than three, the outcome for event rolling odd uh, one, three, five, like I say, and the probability of this event is three, I would say, I mean, this is too many words, so I'm gonna come back with this and show you. So for A, so probability of, uh, let's say, odd number, uh, odd number, right? Weight gonna be equal to what? How many outcome from the odd number? Three, one, three, five. We mean three outcome. So I put three. How many total outcome? Oh, I'm gonna should say up like total outcome. Total number of outcomes, which is n. Or uh, sometimes it call some of size. Gonna be six because we have one through six, right? So three of six. Okay, so we I can write as one over two. No, actually I keep it three of six for now. And then for probability of, uh, uh, of number greater than three. So greater than three. That will be, how many number are greater than three? Five, four, five, six, will be three out of six. Okay, right? Okay. And, um, and we apply the formula, the general formula here, P of A or B equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. So I will have like uh, P of odd numbers or X greater than three will be equal to P of R number plus P of greater than three and then minus for the probability of R and greater than three, right? You need to have this guy also. So let's have probability of the number that odd and greater than three. So how many outcome that odd and greater than three? So you know that it should only five. Because only five is odd and also greater than three. So that's mean we have only one outcome, only one number. Um, and now the bottom equal to six. So one offset. Okay, so I will plug in here and have P of odd will be three out of six plus P of greater than three, P out of six minus one out of six. And then I have five over six. What I mean, the answer for for p of odd or greater than three. Okay, that is for a. Let's move here and 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 see what the uh, what the guide tell you. So yeah, like I say. Uh, three six was a uh, probability for rolling odd number, and then the greater than three of uh, four five six here. That the event gonna be three of uh, probability gonna be three of six again, and uh, and because uh, actually <laughs> um, we don't know if it mutually exclusive or not. But we know that scene, oh, we actually know in here because it's explained that scene both event contain five, outcome five, right? 
So um, there's a reason. There's a reason why you subtract one six over here. Three six plus three six minus one six equal to five six. I'm not sure if you like the way from the guy knows show you or me or mine, but uh, um, but I I hope that you understand at, at this point. Okay. Let's move for problem B. Um, okay, maybe problem B. I need to uh, explain to you clearly. Okay, for uh, rolling a number less than three. So less than three or six, right? So less than three, you know that's only one and two, which mean the probability of number less than three will be two out of six. And the outcome for the event rolling six is only six. That means only one number. So then the probability of this event is just one out of six. And this clearly is mutually exclusive event because you don't have, I mean, in, in the first event, it just have only one and two, right? And the second one it just have only six. There's no, there's no common number between to this outcome. So then uh, they're mutually exclusive and we can just apply the special case over here that because we're pretty sure it is mutually exclusive. And then we're gonna have uh, adding to this probability 2.2 of six plus one of six gonna be equal to three of six and we equal to one half. Okay, so this is end of the section uh, 5.2 and I'm gonna see you in section 5.3.